Back in January 2019, about three years ago exactly, Nintendo released a video stating Metroid Prime 4 had restarted development. Their spokesperson, Shinya Takahashi, said the game wasn't meeting Nintendo's quality standards and that the project would be reevaluated. Producer Kensuke Tanabe will continue heralding development, and Retro Studios, the same team that developed the previous three Prime games, is going to be collaborating to make this thing happen. There was no ambiguity in the announcement. Prime 4's progress, up to that point, had been scrapped. So in other words, Prime 4 started development that same day three years ago. We can use this. The Prime series, fellas, it's blessed. We love it. Retro's given us so much data. I could tell you dozens of stories behind each game's development, and I will. We're gonna use everything to calculate how long it takes to make a Metroid Prime game. Then, using that data in addition to what we found in a previous video, the extra time a new game needs to be developed on the Nintendo Switch hardware, I'm gonna show you why Prime 4 is probably, maybe likely to release this year. Let's analyze Prime 1's development first. To begin, we have records that Shigeru Miyamoto, at the time head of Nintendo's Entertainment Analysis and Development Division, approached Retro with the idea of a first-person Metroid game. While we lack specific dates, we know this happened in the year 2000, and so the game's pre-production, or at least planning, likely began sometime around then. Prime 1 released November 17, 2002, which would mean the game needed at most in just under three years to be made and released, depending on the time of Miyamoto's visit. That said, one of Retro's senior artists, James Dargy, has gone on record saying the first level Nintendo approved took the team six months, then the rest of the game was finished less than a year later. This seems to imply Prime 1 was in development for only a year and a half, not anywhere close to our three-year highball. Well, that sounds, well, ridiculous, considering the game's scope and potential year and a half production gap. It could be reasonable? See, there's a few factors here. First, the last nine months of production were notorious for their 80 to 100 hour work weeks. Second, Retro was juggling three other games at the same time before they all got canceled. The game being made quickly? Extreme Crunch explains that. A year and a half Wasted? Well, working on four different games is gonna consume a lot of time. So three years, a year and a half, I don't know which is more accurate. There's an argument for both. But the last thing I want to do is get everyone's hopes up and say Prime 4 is releasing earlier than it will because the first game we're calculating skews the numbers. Therefore, let's just be safe and cut it down the middle. We'll say, I don't know. Maybe James Dargy was literally just referring to development time, nothing else. Uh, no marketing, production, whatever. Going with that, 3 years and 1.5 years average out to 2 years and a quarter. That's the fairest estimate on how long Prime 1 took to make, albeit with some inhumane working conditions. With Prime 2, there are fewer stories, but we know it started production after Prime 1's success which means it had to begin development after the first's release. Nintendo basically bought out Retro in this period, replacing the company's previous manager in the process. Between everyone hating the old guy and Prime 1 getting incredible reviews, the team was feeling pretty good. Given that, and the clear similarities between the two games, you may expect that Prime 2 was completed much more quickly than the original. But no, the game came out almost exactly two years later, November 15th, 2004. While we don't know nearly as much about this game's production, it's possible to point to the game's new design assets as taking up significant development time. Also, as Retro was now a nicely established company due to the previous game's success, the developers probably didn't need to suffer through a crunch period or at least not one as intense as with Prime 1's. Given that, I don't think two years is an all too outlandish development cycle for Prime 2. And I mean, hey, two years is the maximum. Looking at numbers this way gives us a clear indication of the latest Prime 4 should release. 
On to Prime 3, this one was greenlit in late spring of 2004, even before Prime 2's release. Some key members from Retro went to meet with Nintendo about the upcoming Wii in December of 2004, so that tells us the game hadn't started production quite yet. This game is quoted to have started development from around 2004 to 2005, but given that it clearly hadn't begun by December of 2004, I'm going to assume we're looking at a super early 2005, probably like January. And well, with Prime 3, that's about the best we got. The game came out August 27, 2007, meaning it took around 2 years, 9 months, or 2.75 years for simplicity's sake. So looking back at our three numbers, we have 2.25 years for Prime 1, 2 years for Prime 2, and 2.75 years for Prime 3. If we average these out, we find it takes approximately 2.33 years to make a Metroid Prime game, or 2 years, 4 months. Now remember, Prime 4 restarted development around 3 years ago, so hearing that a Prime game should take around 2 years, 4 months, kinda awkward that it isn't here. Or so you'd think. See, here's the thing. In a previous video, check it out, we determined the additional time it takes to make a Nintendo Switch game, because well, New games take longer to make than their predecessors. Back then, we found that across all of Nintendo's long-standing franchises, of those we could reasonably calculate, new games take around 0.69 additional years to make. Adding that to our previous number, the average development time for a Metroid Prime game, a new entry should take around 3.02 years to develop. And see? Now we're getting somewhere. That would mean Prime 4 should be released in less than a month. So basically, expect a shadow drop in tomorrow's Direct. Nah, nah, I'm just messing. We haven't seen any footage, trailers, definitely not a release date, nothing. But the math doesn't lie. Prime 4 should be soon. So why isn't it here? Well, this is a lot, but I can think of five likely reasons. One. The first Prime game was developed under crunch, meaning the time it takes to develop a Metroid Prime game on average should be a bit longer. Given how much that's frowned upon in the modern gaming landscape, it's less likely Nintendo of today would force Retro to undergo such conditions. They wouldn't want the bad press. 2. The fact that Prime 4 had to be restarted tells us that the team was not only struggling, but is committed to a quality product. After making such an announcement, the end result cannot be rushed. 3. Shortly after it was announced Retro would be handling the game, ads were posted looking for storyboard artists to create quote, emotional scenes. This means the game will likely take a more cinematic approach, which will take additional time to plan and animate. 4. After Retro released Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze in 2014, we heard they had a new game in development, but we have no idea what it was or is. If that game is still in production, it's possible it's being made alongside Prime 4, which would likely slow Metro's development substantially. 5. Unlike the first three Metroid Prime games, which were all made back to back, Prime 4 is being developed after almost a 12 year hiatus. Retro likely has an entirely new team of developers with way less experience producing these kinds of games. To conclude then, there are too many unknowns to say when Prime 4 will come out definitively. However, the fact that, based off the series history, Prime 4 should have been right around the corner if not for some as of yet unknown complications, well, that can only mean one thing. It has to be close, right? Prime 1 and 2 released in a November. Prime 3 was in August. This is already the longest a Prime game has ever taken to create. We're in unknown territory. I admit that. But the series is usually pushed towards the tail end of the year. I say, fingers crossed, unless something real bad happened, there seems to be a solid chance we'll get it before next January.